Well, welcome uh, to, uh, to, to my talk about uh, buffer bloat. It's about that we have soon realized that buffer bloat actually exists, but uh, we also have to find a solution and a cure for it. A little bit about me. I'm, uh, uh, I work at Red Hat as a kernel developer. I have a computer science education. I've done, been a long time Linux user. I have uh, three open source projects and con I've contrib contributed to a, a lot of other uh, open source projects. And I, I'm the organizer of the Netfilter workshop. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I want, instead of doing a standard overview slide, I, instead I want to tell you what you will get out of this uh, this talk. So, in 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 here, you will learn that uh, the the artificial benchmarking used by the industry. Is, is, is bad and have given us a, a crappy internet connection, connection with buffer bloat. And you will also learn that the, the famous uh, car analogy to, to queuing is, is dead. And we should instead use something like a, a water fountain analogy. You will also learn that, that the Linux kernel is to blame. And buffers are everywhere. Also inside the kernel, inside the, the, the Nix. And you will also learn about how we actually have, have, have fixed the kernel, uh, and, and, and which, which uh, kind of features were used, something called byte queue limits and something called TCP small queue. And I'll also teach you about um, something called cuddle. It's pronounced cuddle. It's codel. Um, it's a controlled delay uh, active queue management algorithm. And this is sort of the new holy grail of, of buffer bloat. So even though I say this is a really, really established term and stuff like that, what is buffer bloat actually? Well, buffer bloat is excessive buffering of packets uh, that provide no added value which, uh, and only adds extra delay. So perhaps this was a misguided attempt to, to uh, avoid packet loss. But you have to realize that not all packet loss is evil. We actually need packet loss for correct operation. That's how the TCP protocol was, was made. We need a timely congestion notification. This also uh, accounts, uh, is, is also true for the explicit congestion notification, which is not a packet drop, but it, we need this feedback uh, from. And if you have a really, really long queue, this feedback would get screwed up. So. Buffer bloat is, is, is bad in, in, in a lot of senses. So it's, it's quite a, a well-established term now. It started in 2009. Uh, Jim Geddes um, did uh, some work on it and, and found this new term. He, he, he also talks about it. I think it's funny to call it the sort of the dark matter or dark buffers of the internet. Uh, and I like this analogy because you can have big queues in the routers, but you will actually not, not know them they're there until you, 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 they start to fill up. And then you realize the buffers are there. So you can put stuff in there which are actually are going to hurt you in, in certain situations that you are not actually aware of. And what we have also experienced that every time you solve it in one place, it will show up in, in another place, the buffer bloat problem. So how, how, how bad is it actually? Well. It is quite bad. A single flow, a single TCP flow can, can ruin your day. If someone uploads on your ADSL line, uploads something, you will easily get a 1.2 seconds delay. As you can see by, by this graph, that's a bit high up here, that, that you, can, you can see here, there's, there's two uploads starting, one here and ending here, and one starting here and ending here. So it's quite obvious that that the uploads are, are, are destroying our, our interactivity use of, of, the, of the network link. So it's, it's, it's quite easy to, to, to ruin your link. But in this example before, what was the, the queue size actually? Uh, I have to say that the, uh, this is run on a real ADSL line, so the, the real throughput on the link, the bandwidth available is, is lower because of the ADSL overhead. And the measured delay is this exact number. 
and it's, it's quite simply calculated the buffer size by the bandwidth delay product. So it's it's 64k uh, of of buffers. So, and this actually in this example comes directly from from the the TCP uh, window the connection was using. And the, where does this delay actually come from? Is that it comes from the the transmission delay. You can say sort of the opposite here. See, say how many bytes I have and and the, the bandwidth, and you can say how much uh, a, a big size MCU packet. How much delay is that going to to give me? Uh, 20, 26 milliseconds delay, but but the, the, what I want to to uh, to to teach you or, 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 or make a certain point of is that to the surprise of us that this 64 kilobytes that's not much, but it, me, it actually matters a lot for a small line like a half megabits upstream link, which a lot of people have in their homes on their ADSL lines. So just to put it in perspective, 64 k bytes can actually be mean a lot on, on, on your line. So this can be buffer bloat, even though this is a small number, right? So, and I also want to, to stress another point is that bi-directional traffic also suffers because you have this queuing happening one place and we have this acknowledgement feedback loop which is going to, uh, to, 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 to destroy our experience of the line. So here in this test we have um, uh, uh, a download progress ring, and all of a sudden, an uh, uh, upload starts. That's, that's the the blue line, and it it, it kills kills the, the the downstream download. Actually, and you can see it falls down to to around the same level as the upstream uh, upload, and 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 the, and the here is the same thing happens. This it hurts by bidirectional traffic. If you have a symmetric line, this is not going to be as bad. But this is a ADSL line with a asymmetric line. And it, it gives this really bad behavior. So what's, what what happened was that that uh, we, we memory was really expensive. So we, at the time we had small small links. It wasn't big, a big problem because we didn't put so much memory in. So, so nobody really noticed. We got a little bit of big, bigger li uh, links, and and memory is cheaper now. So we we, we got larger queues in the hardware. But nobody really noticed this problem uh, because we were u all using the wrong measurements. Uh, we're sort of using artificial lab uh, ex uh, measurements and benchmarks, which does not represent what is actually going on in the real world. So this bad industry benchmarking, we basically focus on doing how much bandwidth, and sometimes if People have a fast project they also report how many packets per second they, get, they can handle. But they forgot to measure the latency in their test. Nobody reports, reports this stuff. Uh, but it's actually important for users. How, much, how, how long does it take to load a given page, or when, will my SSH connection actually work or not? And they also forgot to do bi-directional testing. And most importantly, they needed to test the latency on the load, not just send one ping packet to say, this is great. Well, and there's, the, there's this famous, famous quote, the, it's the latency to do it. So uh, Dave Tart, uh, who's part of the uh, buffer bloat project, is working on something he calls real-time response on the load test. And there's uh, another Danish guy who's involved in buffer bloat who has made some tools available for that. I've uh, reused some of his uh, experiments and tests. I'll show that later. Uh, I have agreed with him that it's OK. Um, so one obvious thing to do when you have a queue, like I'm saying we, are, we, are, we, are, we have, is, is to do uh, packet scattering at the bottleneck. Right, that's, that's quite easy. But, and of course, it needs to be buffer bloat aware. But in, in reality, it's, it's more difficult than that. Because uh, we, we we have have to be in control of the queue, but in reality we 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 are we are actually not. I'll get into that a little bit later. First, I want to introduce you to something called I call bad and good queue. Because we I don't want to get rid of all the, the queues and buffers. We actually need them in the network to make it work. Because the good queue will function as a shock up shock absorber and will. Um, 
allow us to, to handle these bursts, which is really good. And the bad queue is the long-standing queue, which uh, only adds delay. And uh, the, the algorithm I'm talking about earlier, the, the cuddle algorithm, is the first uh, algorithm to distinguish between these two. I'll get more into that later, but first we, 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 we have to solve the problem that, that the buffers are everywhere. And there's also inside the Linux stack, as I said, Linux is also to blame. So we have uh, hidden queues in, in the, the net cards, and, and the wireless drivers is a whole separate story, uh, how bad they are. And, and some of it we cannot fix because they really like to do packet aggregation and, and stuff like that. And so we basically cannot deploy any smart active queue management algorithm before we, we, we control the queue and forces the queue to accumulate inside the kernel at the, at the queue disk layer, which is our traffic control system. So two recent uh, techniques have been implemented. One is called the BQL, the by queue limits. And another one is called the TCP small queue. Uh, and I'll try to, to explain what is actually going on within these two techniques. So first, the, the BQL. So the goal of the, of the, the BQL algorithm is, is to reduce the latency uh, caused by this excessive queuing in the hardware of the NICs. But do this without sacrificing any throughput. Uh, and as I mentioned, the BQL is essential for, for, for the for the cuddle and active queue management to, to, to really work. So what does BQL actually do? Uh, it's, it, it dynamically adjusts uh, the queuing based on what the, the NIC has been able to transmit or complete uh, in, uh, in recently. So it's, it's, it requires some, some, I'll get into that, how, how Require some, some changes to the drivers. And one important thing is that it's based on the number of bytes that the, the NIC has queued. And this is this is better than than than, than the number of packets, because the, the, the bytes correlates correlates directly to the transmission delay, uh, as I showed earlier. It tries not to be strict, so we, we don't hurt the the and limit the, our throughput. And and it, it generally tries, when it tracks how much we should send to the NIC and, and install inside the, the QDisk layer, it's, it allows it to grow faster and, and shrink slower to avoid this for sacrificing the bandwidth. So one uh, problem with the, the BQL driver or the BQL stuff is that you need to modify each and every uh, netcode driver. Thus, not all of the, the drivers support this BQL feature yet. And if you want to help out, you can, you can do that by, by fixing the drivers. The, the, I've listed the, the basic API here. So you have the transmit send queue, which is in called when a package is queued. And you have another place in the driver where you will complete the queue, most likely at, at, at at the, when when you are when 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 you need to clean up your 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 descriptors, um, <coughs> so we have a, something called TX compute uh, completed queue. Um, so and, and we have an optional reset queue to reset the the, the 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 state of the stack if you have something in your driver where you you need to reset it. A little more kernel details is that we use a, 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 an internal bit value for setting the, the queue state stack transmit off bit inside the stack. And it's actually based on a, something called uh, dynamic queue limits. Uh, the API is based on that, so we can use it in other places in the kernel. I'm not sure it's used anywhere else but the BQL. Uh, and another important thing to know is that it is maintained per uh, transmit hardware queue. Uh, this is also have a, a big influence to get it, getting it to scale. <coughs> and actually makes sense. <coughs> and, and, and 
And uh, the other thing here is called uh, the TCP small queue. So Ekdom uh, up sort of saw that, that we also had inside the TCP layer, we, we caused excessive buffering, which were, were unnecessary. <coughs> So instead, shuttles, sockets are being throttled now inside the kernel. Um, so basically, if the amount of waiting data to be transmitted uh, is above a, a certain limit, we will we, we'll mark the, the, the sockets as, as, as throttle, as a software throttling mechanism. And he uses a, 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 a smart way of using the SKB, SKB buff destructor to open up the stuff. It involves some, some tricks with tasklets, which I'm, I won't come into. I'll, instead, I put a link here so people can read up on, on that stuff if they, if, if they have interest in that. Um, so another thing I want to mention about the TSQ is that the, the default size. So we minimum want to allow two packets. But due to, uh, to this packet aggregation we have inside the kernel called the uh, the TSO, the transmits, uh, send offloading, and the GSO, the generic send offloading, we actually can send a single packet can be 64K. Uh, so the limit is actually two times 64K, and I've listed here how you can adjust it on your own system. <laughs> For example, if you have a very small line, I guess like we saw before, you probably want to adjust it, and you probably want to to turn off the GSO and TSO features on, on the small ADSL line I, I, I mentioned earlier. Um, and now on to uh, <coughs> something which is very interesting, that <coughs> that after we have fixed the Linux stack, now the, the queuing occurs in the right place. Now we need a, a smart actually queue management algorithm to, to, uh, to help us out. And fortunately, uh, Kathleen Nicholson and Van Jacobson, once again, is sort of the man who did all the TCP stuff and made, the, made it work with the flow control concepts. They, they came to the rescue and, and have created something called uh, Control Q Delay, spelled C O D L, but pronounced Cuddle. That's, I don't know why. But, and, and actually, Van Jacobson have, have given a, a really great talk which I put some links in here. If you download it, you can press the links. One warning, though, is that the video is so bad quality. And you should also only view it as a, as a soundtrack to, to the slides you, also, you should also download. It's a really good slide. It's, it's so bad that, that the video quality is so bad that, that it's hard to follow. The current status of the, the, the Cuddle uh, Algorithm is that Hector Massey and Dave Tart had, have implemented that and it's available in kernel 3.5. Uh, it's also available for researchers in the, the network simulator 1, no, the simula network simulator 2 and 3. Uh, so people can play with that. Another very interesting thing that Van Jacobson uh, talked about in this, uh, this video I just referred to is that he had have killed the car analogy. He says that the car analogy is broken. You all know the car analogy with the, the cues and stuff like that. And from, from the outside ob observation, it looks the same, but the internal mechanics is something completely different. Um, what's, what's going on is that with cars, you can try to adjust to political changes and to car prices and perhaps to wider roads and stuff like that. But, and another example of something bad is that a single car, it can cause the queue, and if it sort of stops in the middle and blocks everything else. But I've, as I've told you, that a single queue can cause this. Not a single queue of cars; they're not connected in a way. But but these queues, which are caused by a single flow, it's there's a connection between how it works. So the car analogy, we can like actually use that. So instead, he says that we should use the water fountain analogy. So it's a, a closed loop server system where you have a pump, it pumps up the small water fountain, and you have the pond, how much water is in that, and it's, it circles around. This is actually how TCP works uh, due to the TCP egg flow balance constraints. So let's look 
a little bit more into my, my claim here. So the water level of the pond is not affected by, for example, the flow rate uh, and pump pressure. You can shoot the water higher up, but the pond is going, not going to affect it really a lot. It's still going to be the same pond. If you put pick up bigger pipes, that the pond is staying, still going there. It's, it's, it's a feedback system. So if we want to change the water level, we can do that by adding or removing water to the, to the, to the water, water fountain. And of course, until there's an overflow drain. Uh, and the, the pond is actually the queue in, in the system. And the, it's, it's sort of the backlog for the, for the pump to process. And we, we don't need a huge pond. We don't need the ocean to run a water fountain, right? We need, only need the minimum to keep the pump from running dry. And there's no reason to put a big uh, pond in there to, uh, to, to do this. And this is actually what is happening with buffer bloat. So this relates to, this is also a famous drawing by Van Jacobsen of his uh, TCP window flow control, how it works. I, I think I have to explain this a little bit. Over here, um, I, don't th I don't think it's just we should start here, but, but over here we, we have uh, the package coming in. And what's, what's going on here is that uh, we have the time on this scale here. So packets are sort of being stretched out in time and, and pressed down at, in the bottleneck. But what happens on the other side here is that it would, we will still maintain the same spacing. And as we have the TCP X packet data packets coming, we will send X packets out. We cannot send an X packet out before we have actually received the data packet, which will call us, cause us to have the same, this, these lines down here, it represents the X packets, which are, are smaller. Though. And so you can see we maintain this, the same feedback all the way down here. And at this point, it reaches the sender, and it's, the sender starts to clock out new packets. What happens here in this situation, we have received, uh, maintained a steady state, and the buffer bloat in this picture is, is the five packets here. Because we have a steady state, and the, the queue formed here stays constant. So this is the pond in the, in the water fountain uh, analogy. And this is the buffer bloat uh, uh, issue. So, and, and another interesting property with, with the, the, the TCP flows and this clocking mechanism is that for a, a, a single flow of a given flow, only a single bottleneck on, the, on this path can exist. Because we have this time spacing out. And if someone would have to be, has, has a, a, a bigger link than us, if they are, we are not the bottleneck, they will have a bigger link. And they will preserve our time spacing. They will not squeeze us even more in time. That's an uh, interesting property. So back to uh, the cuddle algorithm. So the top level design goal of Van Jacobson and, and <coughs> Kathleen Nichols was that do no harm. And what this means is that the algorithm should only turn itself on when there's a problem. Like when the, only, the problem only occurs with buffer bloat when you start to fill up the queue. So that's, that's a good target. And so it either does nothing or it tries to reduce the delay without affecting the throughput. Because we don't want as, as soon as you deploy something and you just see some performance engineer sees a, a slight disimprovement of this, it will go out again. So to, to, to have it widely deployed on a lot of routers throughout the, the entire world, we wanted to, 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 to do no harm to the system and only take action when, when, when we have this situation occurring. So back, back to the good versus bad queue. So Kyotl basically solves the problem of determining the difference between the, the good and the bad queue. As I mentioned before, the good queue is the shock absorber, and the bad queue is the long-standing queue, which we call buffer bloat. So if you view the, 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 the the, the system as a this uh, server feedback loop, 
You will also observe that <coughs> this, um, we can have bursts going in, that's, that's the good cue. But a TCP burst go away after one uh, round trip time. Q does, that does not go away after one round trip time is the bad Q. And that is one of the important points which <coughs> makes makes uh, Cuddle determine the difference between bad and good Q. The good Q is actually the minimum Q size or a sliding window which needs to be big enough. <coughs> so uh, how should we measure this, this Q size? So the, the traditional way of measuring Q size has always been in bytes. But it's actually really bad. Because what we really care about as a user is the delay the packet got to, to, the, uh, to the system. And if you want to compute the delay from the bytes, we would have to know the output bandwidth, which is really difficult to, to measure and it can change over time, especially for wireless links and stuff like that. But that's not good. But instead, we could just look at the time it spends in the queue, because that was actually what we were interested in. So, and we can easily measure this. We, we'll just measure it directly by timestamp in the packet when we enqueue it, and when we dequeue it, we'll calculate how, how long time did you stay here. So, and this have uh, the, the cuddle algorithm and the, the paper has called it sojourn time, which is a temporary stay. I'm not so very fond of sojourn, the, the term sojourn, so I would probably refer to this as time in queue time in the queue, so, but the sojourn time also talk about that. So I'll use these two terms as interchangeable, the time in queue and the sojourn time. Another reason why the classical byte, byte counting does not work or have issues is that it's really bad for, for scalability because we have a coupling between the, 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 the shared state. We have a shared state with the, the bytes in the queue. To account for these bytes, we will have, have to uh, have a, a lock because we have on, on in queue, we increase it, on, de on decrease queue, we decrease it. So in, in the, the, the effect of this is that an in queue will block a dequeue and a, the vice versa, which is really annoying from a, a, a programming and, and a scalability point of view. So. The, 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 the beauty of this time in queue, the sojourn time, is that no logging is required. This is really, really nice. We simply timestamp the, the SKB packet on in queue, and we, we calculate the time spent in the queue at the queue time. That, that was easy. And no logging will just timestamp it in, in the SKB itself. And then we try to be smart at the queue time. So we basically, as in, in this algorithm, allow our unlimited enqueuing, but it's, it's, it's not really a problem because, as we talked about, this memory had gotten cheap, and this is a really good way to actually use it instead and just handle this. Uh, so it's not really a problem. And the, the other really nice thing about this is it works for, uh, for time-bearing bandwidth, like, like the wireless and shared links, because no matter what, we measure the time in the queue. So, another really good behavior from, from, from the, 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 the sojourn time and the time in the queue is that it has a surprisingly good multi-queue behavior. We have this multi-queue hardware, which are uh, really difficult to handle when you have to do this byte counting and do stuff like that. We have a lot of synchronization. But the multi-queue hardware does not affect the time spent in the queue measurement. This is really nice because the packet if you view it like this, the packet will arrive, no matter if you have a multi-queue hardware or not, the packet will arrive at a specific rate. I don't care if I have multi-queue hardware or not. And the output rate is also going to be the same. Thus, the time spent in the queue measurement is the same, which is really nice because it's also a problem with this multi-queue hardware to find something that scales. And by also simply measuring the time spent in the queue, we, we measure the, the entire system, what is spent. So, which, and then we can measure 
other stuff, and instead of if we just have a single byte candle, we, we, will, we will miss stuff going on because we'll only s solely focus on, on this byte candle when it stayed exactly this point in the, in the code path. Instead, we could, we'll just measure when it goes in and when it goes out. That's another beautiful thing. And plus, the, the no locking feature I talked about is also really good for multi queue behavior. Um, so what is the minimum size we actually need inside this queuing system for, for Cuddle? To start with, we should actually minimum have one packet. We can agree on that. Uh, and, and this has something to do with this, the, the TCP self-clocking into you. But, and, and we also need two packets, actually, because it might not, something might have to stir the flow, delay it a little bit, and so the packet doesn't arrive well space. And then we need to find some trade-off uh, to how much more Q should we add so it still increases our throughput and doesn't cause too much delay. So we have to figure this out. What should be our minimum queue? We actually affected by this is the TCP control law uh, because what happens is when we drop a packet, we will cut the window in half, which means that if we, if we have a too small of window built up, then we will hurt performance too much because it takes too long to, to ramp up again. So we'll need at least more than three packets, and yeah, how much more can we do? So this trade-off point uh, uh, is, 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 is sort of a, a, a trade-off between the bandwidth and the delay. And, uh, Van Jackson uses a lot of slides on quantifying how this trade-off should be, and I recommend seeing this slide. And uh, what he, 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 he finds out is that the minimum sojourn time, the set to point target, uh, must be 5% of the, the target uh, round trip time, which for Cuddle has been set to 100 milliseconds, which gives the set point time to be 5 milliseconds. <coughs> and this yields substantial improvement in utilization of the bandwidth for only a small added delay. Another note when tuning this stuff is that the, the round trip targets should be in the cuddle algorithm should be bigger than any real round trip uh, time of any connection going over the link. And they, they've chosen 100 milliseconds. I think you can adjust that. Besides that, the cuddle is pretty self-tuning. Um, so <coughs> my oversimplified version of the, of, of the algorithm is that if the sojourn time is above the set point target of five milliseconds for a period of 100 milliseconds, then we begin to drop packets. And we increasingly drop packets according to a controller which is TCP friendly, but it basically just means that we start to drop more and more packets if the queue stays congested. And the real algorithm and the article is down in this link. So the Eric Domessé also implemented the, the, the FAQ version of the Cuddle. And if someone should actually activate Cuddle, you should just activate the FAQ version of Cuddle instead. Uh, it's, it's almost the same as the SFQ, the Stochastic Fairness uh, Queuing plus uh, the Cuddle algorithm. It's, it's a bit smarter because uh, the, the, the new it can distinguish between new and old flows in a smart fashion, which favors interactive flows. Ectomasu actually tried to do that for the SFQ, uh, QDisk, also did some patches, and I, I were annoying enough to show him that it didn't work and he had to revert his patches. Uh, but now he has actually solved it in a, in a really good way with the, the F, FQ cuddle. And it's actually really easy. I put on one line up here. If you have a wireless link and really wants to make it work, you can just add this line as, a, as root to, uh, to activate. Uh, so, so we have some deployment issues uh, because the home gateway is, is the bottleneck and the queue occurs inside the DSL cable modem or 
the, the, the sale modem or the cable modem, which we, 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 we cannot fix. So, so what, if you want to fix it in your, in your home, you have to introduce, introduce another box in front, uh, which with rate limiting to sort of obtain the, the queue. And you have to sacrifice, sacrifice a little bandwidth to become the bottleneck. And the disadvantages is also you lose the, the ability to, to dynamically adjust to sort of boost products from your ISP and stuff like that. One thing you have to remember is to take the ADSL link layer into account. It is really simple. I mean, in your TC traffic control command, you have just have to add the link layer option, something I implemented back in 2005. So a little bit more on ADSL link layer overhead. We have a very, very unfortunate packet, the, the ACK packet, which is very common. So we have to, to, uh, to, to see what, what actually happens here is that the ACK packet due to some, some overhead of encapsulation, uses 106 bytes on the wire, two ATM frames. So this is a 62% overhead of a very common packet. So as you can see here, this is the, the, the green line I've tried to plot in here. And you can see due to this ATM framing, that it, the available bandwidth resources drop up and down here. So it's very important that you, you add to your TC uh, control uh, commands, the link layer ADSL and the overhead of your, your given uh, ADSL link. So some results from, I promised I stole some of Toga's results, that he had compared different uh, active queue management algorithms. This, this graph shows the accumulative uh, time uh, used. You, you have to, hum, hum, this is a, the, the, the ping times and you have the different uh, uh, queue management algorithms here. That our default one is is this one. You can see it's really really bad. A lot of a lot percentage of the time it uses, and have a high probability of doing really really bad. You have the the cuddle in here, and the SFQ I also mentioned here. I'll zoom in so you can see uh, what actually happens here and why you should choose uh, the, the, the FIAQ uh, cuddle algorithm, because this is the red line, and you can see this has a much better, uh, a much lower delay uh, compared to the SFQ, and you can see the, the, the cuddle algorithm here, how it performs. If, it, if you have cuddle by itself, it's also, you can hurt it easily by UDP packets, but this is solved by the FIAQ. Um, so, Sort of to the, to the conclusions, I've sort of asked the question, if, have you found a cure? And I would say yes. We have fixed the, the kernel stack, found some internal buffering going on, and, and we have been saved and got a cuddle algorithm, which is buffer bloat aware. Yes, we have solved it, but getting it deployed is, is really the challenge. Like, what is missing? Well, we just have to update every like home router on the planet. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem, right? The, the, these ho home routers, who are producing them, even though they run Linux, they're not very keen to uh, sort of give us access to their boxes and, and fix stuff when you say it. Um, so in a couple of years, it will solve the problem. But it, if we don't change the, the FQ cuddle algorithm to be the default QDisk, we will... Uh, not reach the, the, the router producers because they, they most likely don't, don't uh, know that they, they have to enable this. So, so we have to, have to enable this as a default QDisk. I'll, uh, hopefully we'll just discuss this with the kernel developers, how we can do that. And then there's some, some would call it minor stuff. I think Dave Tart wanted to, to, to say this was not minor stuff, but it, it really works really well on, on wireless. But we need to do some more work on wireless because the, the wireless drivers cannot use the, the BQL directly and we have some issues how they want to queue stuff. We can get really good results by just knowing how much buffering is going on in the wireless driver, but to, to really fix it properly, some more, more work has, has to be done. <coughs> That's some small problems on the on slow links. <coughs> <coughs> so, so it has to be in investigated. <coughs> Sorry. 
and there's, there's some work going on into when we have to uh, to do this restart point of, of dropping packets, so we, we start to increase dropping packets, and then, then, then we'll all, all, all of a sudden get a good flow, and then the bad flow starts right after that again, and we have to find a, a good restart point. And then there's the whole mobile network problem with uh, the 3G and the getting that deployed there and getting them to fix the problem is, is also needs to happen. You can easy, easily introduce like 30 seconds delay on, on a 3G network, which is really bad for everybody. So, and that's the end of my talk. Some questions? There's one question up there. Uh, how this works with the Windows store? Well, so, sorry, I, I'm not a Windows kernel developer. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but, but yeah. There's a lot of Windows machines out there. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if, if, if the, you deploy it on a, on a, like I told you, on a, on a router box, and the Windows box is not the bottleneck itself, it, it's going to work really, really well because it is the bottleneck is going to occur in the ADSL modem or the box you set in front of the ADSL modem, and you will you will have really good, really good performance. What the, about the big when the network uh, geo vendors like Cisco, Juniper, drive the internet? Do they need to do something too? Uh, yes, it would be really nice if they also started to implement the the cuddle and the FQ cuddle in their their in, in their 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 products. But it's really not the big problem with this. A really ten gig router is is is. It's not going to, to, to be that, that 10 gig router is not going to be the bottleneck. The bottleneck is most likely going to be your home router. So it's not too big a problem to get But there. even the home router guys are now Cisco Linksys, and once they rebase with the latest upstream kernel, they should be able to fix it. Yeah, they, they, they sort of get it for free. Yeah, they get it for free. Yeah. So we're, we're a very generous community now. But the, and then they, they, they will most likely have to implement it, the, the BQL stuff in the specific driver they're choosing to, to, to put on, on the, the small router box. More questions? So when was this uh, submitted upstream or accepted upstream? Uh, in 3.5. Okay. Is, is in 3.5. So maybe two years before we see commercial deployment. Yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate, but that works. So, just one question. Um, how is it that they'll come to, no, there's no active uh, feature that they need to select in the kernel config or anything like that? You say they'll get it for free just by going to a newer kernel. I mean, I'm just wondering whether there's a, a PR campaign that needs to go on with these companies. Yeah, hopefully they, 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 they will listen in and, and but, but yeah, but they, they, they do need to enable the, the, the kernel al algorithm as the default QDisk. And that's what I'm working on to, to have the kernel community say, we'll enable this as the default, because then everybody will ha have it. Right now, what they have to do is they have to actively select, compile the kernel module, and then when running, booting the kernel, they should change the default QDisk to run, to, to run the kernel algorithm. So right now, I'm not sure that they will get the point. But once we change it to the default QDisk, they don't have to do anything. So I'm out of time, so thank you.